Hello friends, Michelle here, and today I'm gonna do a rapid fire vegan Q&A. I am past my due date for this little man to be coming out, and so I know I might have some challenges finding time to film going forward, so I wanna make myself available to help you guys as much as I can right now while I have time. So I went on Instagram, at vegan is where you'll find me there, and I asked you guys for some questions that you have that I can maybe help you out with. So I'm just gonna come here on YouTube and answer your questions. How do you encourage yourself not to eat anything non-vegan when the rest of your family eats? Okay, so this is a question I get all the time. For most of us who go plant-based or vegan, our family is not. So there's gonna be lots and lots of times where you're with your family, whether it's for the holidays or a family dinner or you're out celebrating someone at a restaurant, that you are gonna feel a little bit like your life is more challenging than everyone else's and that's okay. The big thing here is to prepare, prepare, prepare as much as possible. So if you're going over to your family's house for a meal or for the holidays, um, I encourage you to cook something delicious and bring it either for yourself to eat or even better to share with everyone and they'll love it. You can introduce them to some awesome vegan food. It can help you improve your cooking skills. Win, 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 win. If you're eating out, um, you can always call ahead to the restaurant and see what vegan options they have. So you're just going in a little more educated and not having to ask all those questions in front of everyone, which can feel really intimidating or overwhelming. Um, you can also eat beforehand and just think, I'm gonna spend time with my family there. Food is not gonna be my focus at this family get together. Um, and you can bring like snacks with you, pack a granola bar or anything like that. So if these situations come up and you, there really aren't any options for you and you're starving, uh, you at least have something you can munch on. What's the best way to start transitioning from being a meat eater to being vegan? Oh, that's awesome, Elizabeth, that you want to go vegan. We have a really comprehensive how to go vegan guide on worldofvegan.com. I will link it in the show notes and it's got tons of resources, videos, recipes, articles, and more that will support you along that path. Um, so that is my one of my recommendations. And the other just big general advice that I have is don't expect perfection. Don't wait for like the situation to be per perfect. Um, be gentle with yourself and just just do it. Just you want to you want to try vegan? Jump in and do your best and start exploring recipes, exploring resources, educating yourself as much as you can. And yes, just do it. Would you ever consider only being vegetarian? Why or why not? I was only vegetarian for a long time. I went vegetarian when I was eight years old and I went vegan when I was in college. But once I learned about the animal agriculture industry, the meat and dairy industry specifically, it was so shocking and broke my heart to, just shook me to the core that I could never imagine going back. So that is where I am now. Uh, what's your favorite tofu recipe? Oh my gosh, you guys, I have been obsessed with air fryer tofu. If any of you guys have an air fryer, I got mine and it was sitting in the cabinet for so long unused because I felt a little intimidated by it and I hadn't developed great recipes for it. But air fryer tofu is so simple. Take a block of extra firm tofu, chop it up into tiny little cubes, sprinkle on some salt, black pepper, garlic powder, and red pepper flakes, and just dump it in the air fryer. I put it on for about nine or 10 minutes at 200 degrees Celsius. Celsius because my air fryer is in Celsius for some reason. And uh, it is so good, I call it popcorn tofu. My husband and I just are uh, addicted to it. We'll make it and we'll turn on some Netflix and we'll munch on our tofu popcorn. Yum, 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 yum. Is all your family vegan? <laughs> No, if anyone can answer yes to that question, wow, you are so, so lucky. Uh, no, when I went vegetarian, when I was eight years old, I had n never even met another vegetarian. I didn't know there was even a word for it. I just knew I didn't want to eat animals. And my mom was like, honey, that's called vegetarian. <laughs> um, my parents were definitely not. Um, and then I went vegan in college. And at that point I knew a lot of other vegans, but not in my family for sure. They probably thought I was crazy. And uh, yeah, but fast forward to now where I've been vegan for more than a decade and now my mom is mostly vegan. Um, 
I have a couple cousins uh, through my husband, well my husband's cousins, now also my cousins who have gone vegan. Um, his mom cooks tons of amazing vegan foods for us that she's now got in her repertoire and tons of people in our family have stepped toward a more plant powered lifestyle, which is really awesome, so exciting. Um, and I would say if you're in the spot where you don't have any family that are vegan, a, check out our podcast episode about being vegan when your family is not on board because that can give you some really great tips about what to do and what not to do. I have found in my experience and I've heard from so many others who have found the same that being pushy or having expectations on your family to be supportive of you or even more so to step on this path with you or understand why you're doing it. Just let go of expectations of everyone else. Let them do them. You do you. Take pride in your choices. Be strong and and well grounded in your decisions so don't let them like push you around or anything but don't have expectations on your family if you just lead by positive example years will go by and suddenly you'll be like oh my gosh look at all these people who are now coming to me curious about a plant-based lifestyle or this recipe made vegan or whatever it's gonna make a much bigger impact i believe if you just do you and be a shining light for people than if you try and be pushy and have expectations on them. And it'll be easier for your psyche and your conscience too, to not have to like go through that battle of wishing your family understood you better. Just let that go. <laughs> easy vegan breakfast ideas. Okay, uh, this is an easy one. Yeah, I drink smoothies most mornings, so that's my go-to. I have a higher power blender and I just dump, 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 lots of stuff in, yummy smoothie, easy, done. Another great one are smoothie bowls. If you're wanting to like chew rather than just drink from a straw, you can make a thicker smoothie using more frozen bananas. You could do, let's see, oatmeal, overnight oats, bagels with um, hummus and sprouts and stuff, or you could do bagels with uh, avocado toast, bagels with vegan cream cheese. You could do cereal with um, a plant-based milk. You can do a tofu scramble. Those are really yummy and you can batch prep a big serving of that that can last you for several days throughout the week. Um, vegan yogurts. There's tons of vegan yogurts out there. Some of them are nasty. My friend Tony and I actually did a vegan yogurt taste test, so I will link that down below as well, but whew, there are some really good ones and some not so good ones. So don't give up. If you try one and hate it, there are probably others out there that are delicious, but yeah, pretty much anything that you ate before you can make a vegan version of. The tricky one is scrambled eggs, but then you just make tofu scramble instead of that. So Whatever you were eating before, just find the vegan version. I guess that's what I would say. Will you raise your baby as a vegan? Yes, I will. <laughs> I'm really fortunate in that both myself and my husband are both vegan. We've been vegan for more than a decade. There was no question in our minds of well, like, why would we feed uh, unhealthy meat and dairy products to our child <laughs> when we are uh, so loving, delicious, healthier, more sustainable, more ethical foods. It just, uh, yeah, it was a, it was an easy choice for us. We will be raising our child vegan. Of course, there's going to be some struggles that we foresee, which are going to be mostly, I imagine, around um, like birthday parties, school events, different events where non-vegan things are provided, and it can be really challenging to try and have a, a child who doesn't really understand all of, all of the the whys behind why they don't eat those foods. Um, so that's where I could see some some challenges coming up and I by no means I'm tied to this idea of everything needs to be perfect all the time. We have this article on World of Vegan that I think it's, uh, I raise my kids 99% vegan and here's why or something like that. And I feel comfortable with that. Like if someone <laughs> feeds my kids something and it's not perfect, I'm not gonna just like curl up in a ball and cry about it. It's just, it's the world that we live in right now. So uh, we are gonna do our best, our very best. Obviously when our kid grows up, they will have full autonomy and ability to make their own decisions. But I, I believe that um, if we raise our kid with a strong sense of morals and ethics and understanding of like the world's issues and teach them about food, making food, growing food, all of those things, they're gonna have a really strong foundation to make a really educated decision. I am 12 years old and I wanna be vegan, but my parents don't want me to be vegan. Okay, this question I get asked 
all the time, especially here on YouTube. So if any of you watching are young and you want to go vegetarian or you want to go vegan and your parents aren't on board, here is what I would recommend to you. First of all, remember that no matter how old you are, it is up to you ultimately what food you put in your body. Um, so I encourage you to just be strong-willed, educate yourself as much as you can, and really advocate for yourself and be strong in the decisions that you make because ultimately it is up to you. No one else can force you to, well, I guess they can, but you really don't wanna let someone force you to do something that is really opposed to what you want, your values as a human being. So stay strong in that no matter how old you are. I went vegetarian when I was eight years old and so I've experienced a lot of being alone on that journey and feeling not extremely supported by the people around me and I just knew this is I'm not eating animals anymore it's not I just it hurts my heart too much I'm not gonna do I'd rather not eat dinner so that was my approach but today there is so many resources about how healthy and beneficial eating vegan is for yourself um, both now and as you as you grow up, your your lifespan, you'll be able to live longer and not struggle with the, most of the diseases that hit our society and all of that. So I encourage you to invite your parents to watch the films, What the Health, Forks Over Knives, and The Game Changers. All of them are on Netflix, all of them are free to watch, and they have more of a health focus. So whether you're interested in this for animals, the environment, or health, their concern for you, their child, is that you're healthy. And so that's really where the focus should be in um, kind of getting your parents on board with allowing you to do what you want with the, with the food that you're putting in your body. And then also just try and uh, lean towards healthier choices and more responsible choices rather than eating vegan cupcakes all day every day. Um, try and set a positive example and your parents want you to be the healthiest best version of yourself and so if you're taking the initiative to be healthy and be educated about food I imagine that it can help inspire them to not only support you but also perhaps join you in some of taking steps in some of these directions. So, um, yep, you're never too young to make a decision, take action, learn more, and make choices that are in your own best interest. When you first became a vegan, did you ever have a difficult time remembering why? This is actually a really great question. For me, I, I, as I mentioned before, when I learned about the animal agriculture industry, especially the dairy and the egg industries, I was so shocked to my core that those images never left my mind. So my why is really close to my heart, always, which makes it so easy to make every decision around food. Like, no, that's not food, I don't wanna eat that, that hurts my heart. Yes, this is food, plants grown from the earth, awesome. Um, but for all of you guys, it your why could be anything. It could be about animals, it could be about um, for health reasons, it could be for the environmental reasons, it could be for human rights reasons. There's so many, so many different reasons that could be your why. And regardless of what they are, it's so important if you want to go and stay vegan to be really clear on what your why is and to keep that fresh in your mind. So if it's starting to kind of become difficult to make decisions around food, it's probably because your why is becoming a little too distant. So in those cases, go back to what initially inspired you to make this decision. Was it watching a documentary, reading a book, um, talking to a friend? Go back there and put yourself back in sort of that mindset, but also learn more, watch more documentaries, educate yourself more, expose yourself to the general reasons out there of why someone might choose to be vegan or plant-based. And it doesn't take much before you will once again feel like, oh yeah, duh, this is why, this is important to me. And um, the, the, it will make the choices that you make every day around food so, so much easier when you know and you hold close to your heart your why. Do you think it's a deal breaker if your significant other isn't vegan or isn't open to becoming vegan in the future? Absolutely not. I will say, um, so everyone I had dated up until Dan, my husband now, had not been vegan or even vegetarian. I had never, I had never dated anyone who was aligned in that sense. I barely knew anyone at the time, to be honest. Um, and I will say, I mean, I, I didn't know any differently. I didn't really have any expectations of them really ever understanding that because just no one in my life did. And so I didn't miss what I had never had. <laughs> but now that I'm 
married to slash was dating someone who had just when dan and i started dating he had just recently stepped into being vegan and became more and more solidified on that path um in the early days of us dating and being with someone who gets it if 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 your decision to be vegan is really core to your being and like every fiber in you believes that that's like the best the best choice and it's really meaningful to you it can be hard to be with someone who doesn't get that at all um but most people don't like at one point you didn't get that you haven't been vegetarian or vegan your whole life you can be an amazing person and not be vegan um most likely because you just haven't tuned into all the issues around that cause um, i will say someone's attitude toward your decision to be vegan how supportive they are of you how much they listen and care about the things that you care about that is important so if they are just like seemingly nonchalant or non-caring about the things that are so important to you that is a big red flag to me as someone that i'm like ooh, yeah i want to be able to like be in in this game of life with someone who we can look at the issues of the world and attack them together um so that's really important to me but it might not be important to you if you're plant-based for health reasons or it's just not really something that's such a deep seated heartfelt decision for you being with someone who just doesn't get it and you think will never get it and isn't super supportive of you in that space might not matter i mean they're probably just thinking of it as food they don't really understand all the issues around it and you never know what's going to happen in the future remember that you were probably not always vegan not always vegetarian perhaps at some point you even were like wow vegans are crazy i know i thought it was like a health food thing or an extreme thing i just didn't understand why people would even make that choice and so to expect someone who you start to date um to be on board and to just get it and to understand you and just like see what makes you tick right away is a little over ambitious you're really lucky if you find that right off the bat but then you'll have seven million other things that you're different about um that you'll have to work through in a relationship so in long story short short no i would not consider it a deal breaker at all but i would look for someone who is supportive of you open to you ready to talk about things and just like be there with you in life Oh, also, I did record a podcast episode on the Plant Powered People podcast um, with someone who's married to a non-vegan and their decisions about how to raise their kids and all these different things. It's a great episode if this is something that you're thinking about in your mind. Like, do you really want your significant other to be right by your side and vegan or is it okay with you for them not to be there and to just kind of have that little tiny bit of disconnect and struggle throughout your relationship um so i will link that down in the in the description below but it's a really great episode so i encourage you to listen to that is it hard to find a doctor who supports your veganism through pregnancy that's a great question um for me i looked online at a bunch of different OBGYNs and i picked one that i just felt based on her online description and bio uh seemed a little bit more my type of person and the first time i met with her i just felt good about it she was she is not vegan she's not plant-based but she like said she had a friend who was and instantly like gave me some resources like here's a great book on vegan nutrition for pregnancy and so the fact that she was open about it uh non-judgmental she didn't ask me where are you getting your protein <laughs> <laughs> Although even if she did, I'm not going to my OBGYN to be a nutritionist. I'm not going to any medical doctor to be my nutritionist. If I want to get a consult on health on nutrition, I'm going to go to a registered dietitian because that's what they study. For the most part, doctors are not required to study barely any nutrition at all. So you can't really go to them expecting them to have that breadth of knowledge. So from that sense, it's okay. As long as they're supportive of you doing that research on your own and they're not gonna try and like tear you down at every, um, at every decision that you're making, then I think it's probably okay. That said, today, so many doctors are either going plant-based or just like becoming super knowledgeable and aware of the benefits of that. So if it's important to you and you feel like you don't have a lot of that knowledge on yourself and you don't have like, you're not really grounded in your own 
knowledge, research, and beliefs yet, finding a doctor who can really help guide you on that path might be really beneficial. So then it would probably be worth doing a little bit more research trying to find a plant-based doctor. One of the things that was recommended to me, um, if you are looking for a doctor who has more knowledge at least on vegetarian nutrition and vegetarian pregnancies is you could find an indian doctor because a lot of them have uh that have grown up vegetarian and so you're more likely to find someone who's well versed in vegetarian eating if you're looking at some indian doctors so that could be a good little tip all right guys i have got to jump i have a call with bea who works with me on world vegan and uh it is in a moment now so thanks so much for tuning in if you have questions feel free to drop them down in the comments below and i'll try and pop in and respond to them whenever i can um i have whatever time i have before this little man decides to pop out uh so i'm going to be trying to do as much in terms of like recording content and just answering questions and being there for you guys so thank you thank you thank you for watching as always don't forget to subscribe hit the bell if you want to stay tuned when we're posting new videos and you can always find more resources, tons of guides and more at worldofvegan.com. Hope you have a beautiful day and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.